Everybody, how are you? You good? I hate when people say that shit because you can't actually can't actually hear the response. It seems pointless. Uh, this is a solo cast. This is our second solo cast. It's super weird for me because I always have someone across the table from me, and now I have to speak into a camera. And it's crazy how intimidating a camera is. Uh, it's just one person in a studio. The lighting is on. The, everything is, we're all Hollywood over here now. And I just need to speak into one camera. It's super intimidating. Just so you guys know, if I sound awkward, that's why. Um, the premise of this mini sode comes from a couple of places. Like I wanted to uh, take some time to actually dive in a little bit more because to be honest with you guys, I kind of been a little bit um, bland because the focus of the podcast is consistently focused on the guests, focused on the guests, focused on the guests. And I've held back opinions and reflections a whole lot because it's not about me. Um, it's about the guest, which is true, but also not true. So after some conversations with um, our account lead, Suman, and uh, a creative director over at Peeled, Peeled Media uh, by the name of Mark Milburn, we I got my ass handed to me and they were like, listen, hey, put your thoughts and opinions out there a little bit more. Reflect on what you've learned. And after looking at the stats and and what how you guys have actually responded to the mini so that we did uh, for the year in review, I, we looked at that and there was a big spike in, in views and downloads and we we're like, oh my God, people care. And I was like, shit, I guess people care. So now what we're going to do moving forward is every quarter – um, because that's Kevin's new favorite word quarter. Cause he's corporate now is we're actually going to go and, uh, we're going to go, um, every three months, bam, bam, bam. Uh, we're going to go and do a, like a quarter in review. So right now there's, there's, you know, somewhere between eight to 10, 11, 12 episodes out, um, that I just want to run through and also just kind of give you guys an update on where I'm at. Um, because we're moving around in the story together. The other thing about doing a solo cast is you need to continuously talk and you don't get a chance to think, which makes you sound a little bit stupider than I already am. Anyway, so a lot of a lot of kind of where this comes from is like I've always had this resistance between like this, this whole, and if you can't see me right now, I'm holding a selfie, like a, a phone up. I hate this whole spotlight, the spotlight, this whole like kind of um self just putting yourself out there in that way because it's it's always seemed like narcissistic and self-absorbed as well and i think that in a world of so much crowded content there doesn't need to be another person um out there um, putting that content forward or or just being out there in that way so for me it was like well how about i just don't do that i'll just host the podcast the spotlight will be on the guests and that's pretty much it um, and then I realized that people actually do care, uh, the amount of DMS and the texts and stuff like my phone numbers in my bio. And so people just text me. And so the amount of impact it's had there has shift, shifted my perspective a little bit. Um, I also just don't think that I'm necessarily like worthy of an opinion. And I see that of like a lot of millennials, a lot of younger people is like, Oh, I'll start a podcast and I'll show people how to do X, Y, Z. What? who gave you the right? <laughs> and I say that with the utmost respect, but it's like, who, 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 who told you you could have an opinion on, um, the climate crisis? Who told you you could have an opinion on music? Who told you? Could, and obviously everyone's entitled to their opinion, but putting it out there as fact is different. And I think that's one of the things that we we're in an information age where we can't disassociate or figure out what is fact from fiction. And that's doing journalism, a huge a harm. That's doing, just our minds and, and our content streams a huge harm. So I don't really want to add to that. But you guys also know as a huge part of my premise is being like, I put things out there as like, I think. And I think a lot of podcasters, YouTubers, whoever, they put things out there like, well, here's the thing. If you're young, uh, you should do X, Y, Z. You should go to conferences and you should put that on your LinkedIn as in that's what you should do versus stating that as like, well, here's what I've done and I've had marginal success in it. So I try to do that more and more because it creates connection as well. And I think that beyond like anything, that's what we are missing in 2020 is, is actual connection, actual community. And that's again, a, another part of me doing the solo cast is to actually open up in that way. Um, you know, sitting here, having a singular voice, talking to a singular camera, shit is intimidating. Like we can't even look each other in the eyes anymore in our society. I can't even look this camera in its lens. <laughs> How fucking crazy is that? Um, and it just speaks to the level of connection that we have or, or that we don't have rather. 
So I'm trying to find ways to bring that back. And one of the ways of bringing that back is, is sharing a vulnerable experience or sharing statements as I think, or uh, in my, in my case versus I know it is fact. It is true for me. And it's true for you too. Cause that actually doesn't create connection. It's just coming from a place of, Hey, this is what happened to me. And this is how I found success. Maybe there's something for you there, or maybe there's not. And if there's nothing for you here, then that's fine. Keep moving. I don't have to, uh, impose my opinion on you. Anyways, just some of my tidbits with um, humans and how we interact with with social media. Um, also checking in with you guys like the, if you guys don't know, we've been doing the podcast. Uh, now the website is up. We've been talking to sponsors and and now we've actually, we've completely rented this studio. I know you guys can't tell because behind me, um, if you're just listening to this, but Behind me is, is all the same pretty much. We did some some different sound padding. We added some new desks. We painted the walls, new product walls, new computers, mounted some TVs on the wall and just did some stuff. Um, so there's been a, it's been a year of change thus far. Um, and the team's just been working incredibly hard. Uh, the tribe over here at, at, at self hired with, you know, the compound and, and, and the bodega in the front and, and what's going on with the back and THC next door and the entire community is just elevating and it just, I don't know. It's, it's, it's real connection. And I think that's what, what we're missing anyway. So yeah, man, podcast is coming back. Um, super, super strong. The, at the same time, the website is up. If you haven't checked that out, go to www.thinkspacepodcast.com. Um, it's the sexiest site ever. It's the sexiest podcast site on the web. Um, and I, but I don't even think that's a hyperbole. Um, uh, Julian, uh, DeShooter, uh, over at Chasing Sunrise, fully designed his team over there. So if you need any website stuff, get to him. But uh, again, and that's another thing, like our guests come in, become part of our tribe, grow our family, grow our level of connection, grow our level of fulfillment. And then we all pay it forward. And then I was like, anything I can do with these local businesses or, or people around, I'm, I'm going to do it. And that ties back to my earlier point of like, I hated doing this like selfie shit. And I hate when people will be like, oh, like, yo, I'm just, uh, I got groceries. And I'm like, I don't care if you got groceries, you're not telling me anything. Or, oh, I'm at spin. That's like, you're not telling me anything. Um, until I actually just went, I had an epiphany this morning. I just went to TriStar and had a, a session with Kajan. And I was like, man, I, I left. I was like, how do I help him? How do I help the situation? How do I make this a, like it's, they have a, a, a great business over there. And I just want to, I want to f- have them find more success and more success. And I'm like, well, what can I do? And it turns out the only thing I can really do is be vocal about it on social media. Cause I have five, 600 people that will see my stories and in turn will actually go and, and maybe convert to some clients, which would be great or convert to some, somebody will, that will go to classes at TriStar or whatever it is and just try to like champion that. So it's kind of changed my perspective as well as like, well, Maybe I can actually add some value rather than just document and tell people things that they don't need to know or don't necessarily care about or be, um, you know, just self-absorbed in that way, but rather just use it as a tool to give. And that's kind of how this podcast is delivered a little bit more is like continuing to find ways to give to you guys that tune every week, um, to the guests that come to our podcasting community around us. And that's something else that's like just grown tremendously, like a ton of you guys are just like, a ton of you guys are non-podcasters and a ton of you guys are podcasters too, <laughs> which is crazy. And having all the exchanges and and the the coffees and, and hopping on other people's podcasts has just been super fulfilling. Again, tribe, community, connection fills my heart. And that's, that's, that's truly where my value system lies. So it's like within all of that, you know, you've seen the podcasting community grow so much. And just seeing Vancouver find its footing in that space is super, super beautiful. So continuing to bring those people together has just been like, and just, and, and having to be a little bit early in the space, we've been doing this for two years now and our stuff is very clean. It's very refined. The workflows are there. We have a team. And so just lending that knowledge out. And if you're listening right now and, and you need help with anything, um, yes, like self hire can, can come through and, and be a production studio for you guys. And, and we can do that. But just for me personally or, or anyone that's involved in the back end, ask questions i'm happy to i'm happy to 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 share our experiences and how we failed and fucked up and how you can actually leapfrog some time because literally it's not a zero-sum game and i think this like goes for all of business like it's not a zero-sum game me winning does not mean that you lose 
When we get attention over here or we get clients over here or we book big things over here, that doesn't necessarily mean that uh, Podcast X or, or Company Y misses out on anything. There's more than enough food for everybody and we need to get out of this like little survival mindset. So it's like... <clears throat> If there's anyone I can like shout out or anyone, that's why we're doing the weekly shout outs now. If there's anyone that we can shout out or any company that we can help grow or any tribe we can help build or any anything that we can do for anyone in this space, we can do it because they win, the culture wins, we in turn win, the audience grows. It's not a zero sum game. And I think that's one of the things that we've kind of like adopted over the years is having a zero sum game, which sucks. And this kind of this kind of scarcity mindset. Anyways, um, if you guys have been tuned in, I've been uh, out in Vietnam for like a month, um, literally just spending a month looking at trees and the ocean and just staring at shit because um, 2019 was super, I don't even know, man, um, the most unique year of my life uh, thus far, and I had the opportunity to like sit down with with the smartest people I know um, and this like literally more intelligent people constantly because of my other line of work in finance and because of this line of work um, with the podcast and with self hired. And I literally didn't get a chance to download any of that information. All that information was like surface level in my brain. I heard them say, I understood the words, but I didn't understand the meaning or the ideas because <clears throat> I just moved so fast. And I don't necessarily give myself the time to download ideas and feel them or put them on the back burner. And that's what things like meditation and these like walks through the woods and these different things, that's what, that's what it does for you. But I wasn't necessarily getting that. So I just literally left everything, um, went to Vietnam for a, a month. Uh, I know I don't look like it, but, uh, I did get quite a tan going for a little while and I was just like, had moments where I was just like riding on a scooter, like riding on the back of a bike. And literally I would have to pull over the bike and just get on my phone and just start going because uh, podcast number 27 with Nick Lowe. And I was just like, oh my God, that's what he meant. Or like, oh, that, that's what he said, but this is a new interpretation. And it goes back to this idea um, that ideas don't need time, they need space. And I don't think we really understand that ideas need space. And that's part of the premise of this podcast is to give ideas space. You ever talk it out with somebody, have a high level conversation, you talk it out, you come to a epiphany and you're like, oh, that's how I put that business together. Oh, here's how we solve uh, plastic poverty. Here's how we do whatever. A lot of conclusions are come to at this table, which is super fulfilling for me, but it's only because we give the space for them to occur. And so if I can leave you with something right there, it's just like, <clears throat> don't, don't look at busy as good. <laughs> Working isn't necessarily always good. Hustling isn't always necessarily good because you, you, you're not executing on ideas. And beyond that, you're not even getting ideas. You're, you're leaving things on the table in your own mental because whether you like it or not, our energy in a day is, is pretty short. We don't have a lot of it. So we need to use it very, very wisely and, and allocate time there to actually ruminate on ideas. It was just something I've kind of picked up in Vietnam. Also in Vietnam, shout out to Vietnam, <laughs> first and foremost. Shout out to Vietnam, Vietnam was crazy. Um, but also in Vietnam, I got a chance to go back and re-listen to a bunch of podcasts and re-listen to um, the mini show that we did uh, for the year in review, which was like terrible and super rushed. Um, so I apologize for that, but it's like we, we I didn't have the time to ruminate on those ideas. And now I have had the time to ruminate on those ideas and, um, and those like those guest conversations basically. And now going forward, as I look back on these like seven, eight podcasts that we've got right now, you know, running through those a little bit, it's like you need to listen to like a podcast or like consume a piece of content and then like take an hour <laughs> or like take 30 minutes, which is like super, super tough. It's super, super tough to like actually listen to an hour and a half podcast, <clears throat> take notes on it, and then go marinate on it somehow, like by doing the dishes or like just like, and what I mean marinate or take the time after that, I just mean like consume a piece of content, take your notes or whatever. That's how I judge if I consume a piece of content now. It's like, if I'm going to take notes on it, I'll consume it. But if I'm not going to take notes on that piece of content, I'm not going to consume it. It's not worth my time. I can allocate that time somewhere else. So what I'm proposing to you guys is like, well, all right, if you're going to listen to a piece of content, listen to the piece of content, all right, take notes on it, 
then go screw off, go to go do your dishes, go stretch on a mat, go for a walk, go for a run. It doesn't matter what the activity is. It just matters that there's zero inputs. There's zero distractions. Don't watch TV, none of that. Like zero distractions, zero inputs. You can actually process and download that information. It makes learning so much easier. And it actually makes without the time to ruminate on those, on the content you just consumed, the content itself is actually worthless. If you think you're consuming informational content to get new ideas or to further your understanding or to gain knowledge, to execute further on whatever it is in your life, and you don't actually take the time to download the information and figure out the execution of the content that you just consumed. Sorry, bro, that's a waste of time. That's just you lying to yourself in a way of being like, well, no, that was just entertainment for you, but you disguised it because you're like, oh, I can maybe learn something here, but you didn't learn anything there. And I understand that it's super hard to like consume a piece of content, take the notes, then take the time after <clears throat> to digest it, and then take the time after that to figure, all right, so now that I know this, here's the three things I'm going to change, or here's the two things I'm going to put into action, or here's the one communication I'm going to send with some other team member or someone I know to get the ball rolling on something, or here's a new idea. Without the actual actionable points from the content you've consumed, I don't think the content's worth anything. And maybe I'm wrong. And so that's why like your attention is super, super, super important to us and important to me. And that's why we like, you know, we started thinking about insights per minute and these different metrics and all that. But you know, we take your time, we don't take your time for granted. And within that, if you do choose to spend your time here, please, 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 I beg you, if there is one valuable point, two valuable points, three valuable points from any part in the conversation that you listen to, please do something with those points or add them to your consciousness, add them to your knowledge base and go from there. Because as I learned when I tried to do my recap, <clears throat> just off the top of the head uh, for the year end, I was like, oh man, I hadn't actually <laughs> downloaded any of this information. <clears throat> <coughs> Anyways, let's jump in um, a little bit. Let's jump into what we got going here for the last, uh, for January, February, uh, the podcast that we had as I look at my phone trying to figure this out, which podcast did we do? I know we started off with David Katz, which was pretty wild. And if you're not tuned into my socials or you're not tuned into ThinkSpace, um, I was seriously on the David Katz train, to say the least. Um, we started off with David Katz. David Katz was super crazy because I just reached out and he, for some reason, said yes. I have no idea. And if you don't know who David Katz is, David Katz is the CEO of Plastic Bank. Um, he's trying to do two things. Number one, he's trying to solve uh, plastic pollution in the oceans. Uh, he's from Vancouver Island, uh, same place where I'm from, and and he's now global and created a global company, a global business idea. Uh, so uh, plastic out of the oceans <clears throat> by turning the the the, the source off, the source of that plastic off. And then number two, he's trying to solve poverty. And he thinks both of those things can be done at the same time. Um, in terms of actual takeaways, actually hold up story, story time real quick. So we actually, so I DM'd him and then I like stocked him. I was looking through like B Corps to, for my other job and I was trying to find B Corps, like certified uh, benefit corps in, in, in Canada and in BC and in Vancouver. And I was... um. I found this thing called Plastic Bank, which is, you know, co-founded by David Katz. I went in, went in, went in. And then I was like, oh my gosh, you know, he's dealing with the Vatican. He's dealing with, um, you know, the royal family. He's dealing with Hinkle. He's dealing with some of the biggest, like biggest companies in the world, biggest organizations in the world. And, you know, I went through and on his LinkedIn, I was like, ah, there's so much like, there's no, I'm trying to find a way to get through to him. And then I go to his Instagram because he's, oh, he's old, right? Don't tell him I said that, but he's old. And he's like, um. Yeah, uh, he's got like a thousand followers on Instagram. And I was like, oh my gosh, like he's accessible. He's accessible. So what do I do? I pull out my phone. I go, hey, what's up, Dave? You don't know me. Da -da 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 -da. And uh, little do I know, like three weeks later, he opens it. And when he opens it on Instagram, you get that notification. So-and-so replayed your video. So-and-so replayed your video. And you know me, I like to talk. So there's like eight videos. And I was doing it in my living room. And then he starts replaying them and I'm like, oh my God, we're so close. I can't lose them. Like I just, I need to get this guest. And so I, what do I do? 
I hop right back on there as he's replaying my videos. And I'm like, hey, Dave, I don't know if you know, but um, Instagram has this feature where I can see if you're replaying my videos. And I know this was a while back, so I just wanted to reiterate my interest in having you on as a guest on ThinkSpace. <clears throat> and he's like, hey, dude, <coughs> super weird. Why are you stalking me? Um, but I checked out your stuff, and this is awesome. Um, I just checked out your page. And, you know, I'd love to come by for a conversation and talk about Plastic Bank. I was like, amazing, amazing. I was like, let's book it. He's like, hit my email, just sends me an email or sends me his email through Instagram. He's like, just book the date. I'm in, Van and I'm, I'm, I'm in Vancouver these days. He gives me like three days. I'm like, all right, cool. We go through, we book the date. He doesn't confirm the Google Cal invite doesn't send anything back and i'm just sitting here like yo there's no way this guy's coming through there's absolutely no way this guy's coming through <clears throat> and what happens is we come here we set up it's like six o'clock that like maybe four o'clock in the afternoon he confirms the calendar invite so i'm like oh my gosh he's actually coming and then after that he sent it's like 6 30 we book for 6 30 6 30 rolls around and he doesn't show up i'm sitting here the team's here we got the lighting set up everything's set up we booked uh, no client meetings, no nothing. It was podcast time. And nothing happens. And then like 6.35 rolls around, I get an email. He's like from another email that says David something something at Gmail. And I'm like, all right. And it's just like this cool photo of him. Like it's his personal account. He's like, hey, I was at um, my daughter's basketball game. I'm going to be late just so you know. I was like, cool, no problem. Around 7. 7.15 rolls around. I get another email. It's like, hey, Josh, listen, I'll just go and get tandoori chicken. Um, down the block and uh you know give me another 15 minutes seven like 35 rolls around and he's like he walks in the door <coughs> holding this chicken he walks in shakes shakes val our, our ops manager's hand and he's like he comes in he's like oh hi joss like you know very he's very present very present dude he's like oh i'm so sorry like I thought we were just recording this podcast in your in your apartment. And I was like, I was like, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold up, hold up, hold up. He's like, oh, I wouldn't have been so late or or, or uh, disregard so many people's time if if uh if I knew there was a whole team here and you had a production set up and everything. And I was like, wait a minute, hold up. David, you didn't look at anything. <laughs> you didn't like look at the website, you didn't like look at our previous guests, you didn't look at the content we make or the quality of the conversations we have. He was like no, 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 you just seem like a cool guy and I figured it would be good. <laughs> and uh, anyways, so I was just, I was completely, you know, I was just blown away by that and we went through the conversation and that just struck me because the people that I uh, adore the most and respect the most are the most humble and and truly, truly, truly don't take anyone's time for, time for granted. And just the fact that he was gonna come through based on the fact that I was putting myself forward as someone in the in the world that wanted to make a difference in the environment and wanted to make a difference in how we think about our monetary system and someone that was ruminating on these ideas, he was like, that's good enough for me. That's a qualification in itself. I'll go on your podcast. Sure, dude. <laughs> and um, anyway, so we go through, we do that, we do the podcast. And <clears throat> right after that, I take off to Vietnam. And I'm just thinking about this podcast all the time. And I think if, if, if and I'll go back and listen to that, that's episode 54. For me, the big takeaways were, you know, he speaks about his daughter. He speaks about losing his daughter. And I was like, I asked him, Dave, I said, Dave, David, listen, you know, how do you think about meaning in life? And he was like, he starts telling me about losing his daughter um, like a year and a half prior. And he's like, Josh, life is, life is empty and meaningless. And it's empty and meaning, meaningless that it's empty and meaningless. Meaning life has no meaning. And I'm like, what are you talking about, Dave? You're this <clears throat> philanthropic juggernaut. How the hell are you going to say that? And he's like, Josh, listen, we assign meaning. meaning. That's, that's all we do as humans. We assign meaning to things, right? <clears throat> this podcast doesn't mean anything unless the meaning I've assigned it, right? My phone, you know, someone loses their phone, they might start crying. It's just literally, it's just meaning I've assigned. It's just a bunch of wires. And that literally changed the way I thought of everything. Because for me personally, I've always been like, ah, oh, screw Christmas. What's the meaning? It's just people getting together and eating food. Ah, oh, screw religion. What's the meaning? It's just dogmatic thinking. 
ah, uh, screw parties. It's just like people <clears throat> in a in a dark room drinking. But we assign certain meaning to it, and that's actually the true meaning that it has. That's the true value that it has, right? It's like Kobe with Kobe Bryant's passing. Why is that so impactful? Kobe Bryant was just a human, right? There's seven million of us, or seven billion of us. What makes that human so special? <clears throat> well, because we've actually assigned that meaning, and so. That helped me understand how do I interact with life a little bit better. And then he also just blew my mind around the plastic economy and how we can actually stimulate the economy through um, bringing plastic out of the ocean and solve poverty through empowering the poor and giving them credit scores and access to food and water through cleaning their environment, changing the paradigm of meaning um, was probably the most it, I, I know it, re, it was released in 2020, but it was recorded in 2019. It was the most impactful conversation I maybe have ever had in my life and probably made me 10 to 15 to 20 percent happier. So if I could recommend any podcast, it would be that one. Um, not to undermine any of the other amazing guests we had on, but that just for me personally connected in a way that nothing has ever connected before. <coughs> mm. Then after that, oh, my God. So that was recorded before in Vietnam. I came back fresh and I sat down with um with Suman. <laughs> and Suman's our account manager and just like a beautiful personality. She has her new show coming out, XO and Hustle, that Self Hard's producing. And that's another thing, by the way, with Self Hard. We're there's literally so many podcasts coming out. Um, with us Dice Lemons and some other ones we can't announce yet, and some partnerships we can't announce yet, so announce yet, but there's stuff in the works. XO and Hustle is actually Suman's baby um and a and a brand for for women that she's now pushing out. Um it is absolutely beautiful. And, and and she'll talk more about that later. You'll see more from us coming up very, very soon. Anyways, we had a, conf uh, a conversation with her and, and, you know, I just love how that woman is so much and, and how she puts herself forward in the world and how she navigates <laughs> this crazy life, um, but still stays deep, deep in her values and doesn't let societal pressures come onto her and is a leader and a mentor to many. And so that was really beautiful to have that conversation and bring that to the light. Um, as well as just to have one of our team members on is something we want to continue to do because you guys don't see it. You see my ugly face all the time, but our, our team is actually far, probably has far more insight than I do. And so we're going to continue to bring them on more and more and more. Also, takeaways, drink more water. <laughs> Um, a ton of human optimization stuff came from that as well. And, and a lot of spiritual stuff came from that as well. Uh, and then moving past that, oh my gosh, Rick Ocean. So this was pretty cool. So we had Rick Ocean. Rick Ocean is actually the, one of the co-founders of Body Energy Club. So cool. So cool. So Body Energy Club is like one of the, we have like a bunch of brands in Vancouver that like me personally and the team itself hired are like, we, we think they're just doing it right. They're creating a narrative for Vancouver. They're creating a style for Vancouver. They're creating culture in Vancouver. And Body Energy Club has long been one of those companies for us. <clears throat> and having Rick on was just such a blessing to see how he's done that, how he thinks about business. And the big takeaways that from that, from me, were just like, oh, this is how a real businessman thinks and operates. Like not this like Instagram entrepreneurship, which is cool. But like, I want the people that don't even have accounts <laughs> are not worried about that and are still pulling like 16, 14 hour days or whatever it may be, just applying themselves on the highest level and building something tangible that I can see. Like, I think there are 10 locations right now. They're multinational, um, you know, remind me a lot of mild detox and, and how the boys over there have done it. And they're just rapidly expanding in such a profitable business and doing things the right way. So getting into the mind, any entrepreneur that wants to open anything, that is brick and mortar, meaning actually has a physical door and a physical place you can come. <clears throat> I highly, highly, highly recommend that one. Uh, moving on from that, a couple more here. I'll get through these. Tyler Johnston, man, that was pretty cool. Tyler, Tyler's actually a bona fide star. He's on tour right now in America. Um, he's a bona fide star, man, and he was a fan of the show. And he comments on our stuff, and he, he messages me, and and has like a. Um, he, he checks out all our rap videos that self hired does and and he's at all the all the events and all these different stuff he's just a fan which is so cool because he's so well known and so Tyler him coming on actually just gave me hope 
<laughs> um, this shit just gave me hope, man. Like, is how many people do you see it from any place just make it and forget about grassroots, you know, <clears throat> and forget about the people that are actually coming up and can forget about the culture that made them. And that is just the exact opposite of what that man does. And so he's, he was so in tune with all the names we were talking about behind the scenes and, and we were referencing past podcasts and he checked it out and we were referencing other digital agencies and he was like, Oh yeah, I know those guys or we were referencing events and he was like, Oh, it's just there last night. And so that, that, I mean, that was so cool just to see, get into like how the, how the film industry works and how it's being disrupted, but also how you can exist as a wholesome, um, person there that really stands on their values and have one and, you know, Tyler's value, I'm sure, you know, community is one of them. Uh, and then we had Akeem, <laughs> Akeem, <laughs> high grade healing. Akeem reminded me that I really just need to be way more happy. <laughs> I'm really just way too negative. <clears throat> I'm a pretty serious dude and I, I try to smile a lot and joke a lot, but you know, we're all more negative inside anyways, or at least I am. And, and having him on was just like, oh man, what the, the, how blessed we are and how, how privileged we are and how much we should further that and how much we should, you know, take that privilege and take that, you know, health and wealth and just double down and reinvest in ourselves so we can then give it to others and how he's just living like a life of servitude and how he's really thinking about like his linguistics, right? Like he was talking about a retreat and retreating yourself. He was talking about Rastafari culture, Rastafari culture and how like they don't even eat cucumbers and, and mangoes because they're vine fruits and they strangle shit. Um, and that's not something they want to put in their body. It's a hot food. And, and those different perspectives really make you like look into your actual food that you're putting into your body. And I'm someone that believes so much in, in what you eat is actually how you think. Like it's been proven now that you have, um, you actually have neuro, um, neurons in your, in your, in your stomach. You have, um, like your gut biome actually talks to your head. Your head talks to your gut. Your gut talks to your head. So, you know, that old saying like think with your, or, um, listen to your gut that actually has scientific validity now. So if you're filling your gut with a bunch of bullshit, you're not going to be able to make good decisions. And playing off of a conversation I had in 2019 with Steve Rio, <coughs> we are, we live in the knowledge economy. Most of us don't actually use labor to make, to make our money. And if we're in the knowledge economy, we have to, we make decisions and that's our living. So for me personally, I get paid off of the decision, the quality of decision I make. I can't make quality decisions. If my brain and my gut are not working together and, and high functioning, which means it's basically my obligation to eat healthy, not eat processed foods, not eat packaged foods or whatever it may be, um, understand my macronutrients, understand all that stuff because it's my job, it's my obligation to make the best decisions possible. So that kind of like that, that clicked for me a little bit when I was talking to Akeem. And how he talks about natural foods and, and how he talks about sea moss and all these different things and his experience of different cultures, um, was, was <clears throat> frankly just fun. Like it was just a really fun combo. Um, and then, oh man, Elias Spate, damn, my guy over at North Pole Hoops. Yeah, I've been posting the hell out of this one. Um, we did a mini sew for this one as well. So go check that out. Um, yeah, man, dude built North Pole Hoops, dude built the National Preparatory Association. And on top of that, like, and those are just like, those are, or, those are leagues and those are platforms. Basically what he's done is he's building humans through sport and he's creating an industry where there was no industry. Um, basketball was not known 20 years ago in Canada. And now he's providing opportunities for kids from the inner city or kids that, are, that come from a left, less privileged situation to travel the world, get, get division one scholarships and get an education based on the exposure and the systems and the companies that he have, that he's built, uh, him and his brother has, have built. And now the progression of that. And so that's, that's cool. And we've seen that now. And he's kind of, he filled the, he filled the need of the market and that's awesome. Now his progression is, okay, well, how do we unlock the human, right? How do we actually go into the human <clears throat> and teach them about identity? How do we, 
you know, break down the barriers that like, how do we break programmatic societal thinking in players? And how do we actually get them to affect larger change in the world? How do we make this star player into a star person that isn't just going out there and doing positive things, but is being extremely intentional and sophisticated and intelligent about their decisions. So how do you unlock the human through things like camps and, and whiteboard sessions and film sessions and things like that? So how he's building humans and building companies around building humans is actually something that we strive to do here at Self Hired. Uh, so a huge shout out to him and everything that he's done. And I'm just, I'm just excited to see that growth. Um, so thank you for coming on, my man. So, and then on top of that, we followed that up into the basketball one um, with Harp, also known as Three Seed Training. <clears throat> and having these two episodes back to back was absolutely intentional. So, so uh, Harp is an NBA trainer, local guy here in town, uh, in, in the Lower Mainland. Trains all the best guys in the Lower Mainland for basketball. Also trains um, in California, up and down the West Coast. He's in Seattle all the time. I think he's in Toronto or Calgary right now. Um, anyways, and his whole thing is it's not actually about skills. It's actually about things like mindfulness and meditation and, and how we can unlock humans through um, meditation and how we can build players that way. We talked a lot about Kobe Bryant as well in his his passing. Um, and we just talked a lot about human connection and leadership, um, how Indo-Canadians need those prominent male figures, why he hasn't left his community when he can and how he moves as he does. And so, I mean, that's just someone in the training realm, in the basketball realm that I truly believe does things right. And, and again, is building humans. And that's what it's about. It's not about basketball. It's not about listening to a podcast. It's not about whatever you do for work. It's not about that. It's about how that process creates you. It's about how that process gives you mentors. It's about finding obstacles in that. That's another takeaway from David Katz is the obstacle is the way. It's it's your becoming in the obstacle. It's you should go towards those those places of pain. You should find that uncomfortability and sit in it because that's where growth happens. And these are things that we know, but not necessarily things that we feel. And the world doesn't need more information. The world needs more feeling. And so if there's anything I can offer you with ThinkSpace now moving forward in 2020, it's not just information, not bringing you the best minds, uh, but we will bring you the best minds. <laughs> but it's attaching story to that, story to that information, because story is actually the missing link between information and feeling and knowing. Because that's how humans, we've internalized information through the years is through storytelling. So I don't want to give you information with ThinkSpace, although we will. We want you to feel that information, to make that information become knowledge, to become actionable, and become a part of your being, and to move you forward. And why you actually as a listener are so far ahead than most of the population is you have the self-awareness to be like, oh, I need to ask these questions. I need to be pers uh, passionately curious. I need to know why um, HARP is, is unlocking humans and building humans through mindfulness and meditation because that's actually going to help me in this other realm of life. And go back to Kobe Bryant again. He was passionately curious and going against, you know, finding the founder of Walt Disney, interviewing him and trying to pick apart everything. And if you're already in the space where you're like, I need to push my thought I need to make thought expansion a daily practice. I need to be passionately curious about these different things because maybe I can pick something up. You're already ahead. You're already self-aware enough to know that there's so much knowledge out there and you could be so excited about the learning every day. And that's really fun. So when people ask me like, Josh, what are you excited about? Man, I'm learning so much right now. I'm connecting with so many beautiful humans and I'm asking stupid questions and I'm failing forward. And I'm, you know, not, I'm not, I don't have the level of <clears throat> imposter syndrome that I once had, but I still am very humble in how I approach things because every human has something to give. Every experience has something to give. Everything is gift. That's another thing from David Katz. It's like everything is gift. So I just want people to continue to go through 
and be mindful and humble and passionately curious about these things. And that's why we are building this podcast is to build a tribe of people that are like that. Have that humble beginning, have that, that beginner's mindset, be ambitious and, and try to go through and just, and, and be the best at life or succeed in life or whatever that means. But be radically self aware, be radically honest, be a giver, be high compassion, low ignorance. Uh, there's a reflection for you too. <laughs> I used to gauge people on money, right? I used to gauge people on success, what type of job they had until I have an awesome job and a good front facing life. But I was like, oh, hold up. I'm like mid ignorance and mid compassion. And I'm like, I'm actually not a great person because yeah, I might have this over here front facing, but internally I need to be high compassion, low ignorance. And that's kind of my new gauge for people. <laughs> are you high compassion? Or you low ignorance. Like you need to be high compassion and both low ignorance. Or are you high ignorance, low compassion? And we know people in our lives like that. And so that's my new filter. So if you're trying to holler at me, be high compassion, low ignorance, <laughs> ask questions. Anyways, guys, so I'll listen, I'll leave you with that. I'm rambling. I apologize. Um, if this is something you enjoyed, um, you know, please do, please do give a holler. Uh, DMs are open, uh, you know, Raiden, our ops manager, our project lead will get at you, you know, from ThinkSpace, you can hit me personally. Um, I appreciate you going out. Listen, we're, we're, we're trying to rapidly grow. And I talked about imponder, uh, imposter syndrome a little bit earlier. And that's one of the things that's held us back a lot. I, I don't want to put my personality out there. I don't want to and do all these different things. I didn't want to go to businesses and say, Hey, look, look what we've built. It's amazing. We need some money to pay our people, you know, and that's like a big part of my thing right now is, Listen, we want to, you know, we've turned down some money, but we we want to align with businesses we think are truly special and doing something extremely special so we can pay our internal team, not me, but like our internal team and create a marketing budget for the podcast. Everything we've done is on zero dollars. Um, you know, Kevin's, you know, sacrificed, I don't know, probably close to a thousand hours, maybe more. Um, you know, Val, uh, damn. Raiden, damn, Rhea, damn, Suman, damn. The the entire team has just done so much. And so I feel in a position of responsibility now and and putting myself forward and being like, all right, listen, this is what we've done. This is what we created. Here's our tribe of people. Um, how do we work together to bring more value to that tribe and and kind of getting through that? So that's been super hard uh, for me to like step into the world and be like, hey, listen, this is what I've built. This is what my team has built. Um, and it's valuable. And so that's something I'm working through consistently. But to end, like, <clears throat> I just really appreciate you guys, man. Um, yeah, man, I've just been through some dark stuff and 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 having your messages and and having people look at me as a source of strength um has given me purpose in times when I have none. And so I, I deeply appreciate that. Um and that comes from the heart, man. Um, so I appreciate you guys. Um, that's pretty much it. And continue to build, continue to, to build with us. And and I want, I want this tribe of people to have that level of compassion for other people. And if that means sharing this podcast, great. Um, if that means sharing some other piece of content with them, great. If that means going out and having a coffee with them or a tea with them when you haven't seen them in a long time, great. Um, but just think really deeply about your tribe and how you're the people that you have around you. I always say like <clears throat> in life, we have three types of people around us. We have a plus, a minus and an equal. Um, the minus are the people that we're bringing up and we're giving knowledge to and everything that we know we're spilling out to them. We're passing it on to the next generation. And even if that generation is the same age or a couple of years younger than you, whatever, it doesn't matter. And then we have our equals, the people that are working just as hard as us on similar wavelengths and like are grinding in a certain type of way or align with you. They're on your frequency. They're bringing you up every day. That's your tribe. No, that's all your tribe. But, but that's in a different way, though. You know, I have those people in my life. I'm very, very thankful for them. And then you have your plus. And those are the people that have gone where you want to go. And they've accomplished what you want to accomplish. And they've actually they've been to the promised land or they're in the promised land or they're close to the promised land, whatever the hell that means. And that they're, they're giving that back down to you. So you have a plus, you have many pluses, many equals and many minuses in your life. And it's about bringing those people together in a certain way. And, and so I just want 
if I could relay a message is that be compassionate for other people and that bring them forward in life. If that's sometimes that's uncomfortable, sometimes that's comfortable, but bring them forward in life. That's where I find the deepest purpose. But that's me. And this may be not you. I get it, man. Um, anyways, listen, wrapping up. Uh, if this is something that you're into, uh, you know, please do share it. Please do review, like, subscribe as we continue to grow because it means the world to me. And, you know, we're going to be hosting events here um, at the new self hired and we'll be reaching out to the community. Want to continue to see the community grow. Um, oh, I also wanted to send a, so, uh, a, sh a social shout out. Um, so this is something we're doing every week as well. And um, who did I want to do? Who did I want to do? Oh, man. Yo, be prepared. First things first. Social shout out. I got two people, man. Two organizations. First one, I learn a ton. Actually, no, I want to shout out the juice truck. I want to shout out Zach from the juice truck for sure for actually just speaking at this health summit I was just at. They just opened another location in the Whole Foods. Insane. Congratulations, guys. Um, and these aren't paid or anything like that. Like, really, like, this is amazing. Go check out the juice truck. If you're trying to be a little bit more healthy, you should maybe go check out the juice truck. Um, Zach was a previous guest on here. Um, I want to shout out Cold Tea Collective and Natasha Jung, um, who is, is just persevering and creating such a beautiful thing for Asian millennials, um, which is beautiful. What she's creating is beautiful. So we want to shout her out, commend her, you know, say what's up to her because she's doing great things. Um, and I'm just gonna, I got a bunch of here, a bunch of them here. Um, but I'll leave you with one more. The other one that's super cool too, two more. Cuppy Vancouver, re reusable cups in Vancouver. There's going to be a 25 cent charge coming in on every cup. Super cool. Go check that out. Um, that actually eliminates that cost for you. And then on top of that, one more time, um, and so it's a local Vancouver company that it's at local coffee shops. And then I want to shout out Mark Asquith at Mark Asquith at the podcast and accelerator, which is a weekly podcast that we listen to all the time. It helps our podcast grow. Uh, they're a UK, uh, podcast house. Uh, go check them out. Thank you so much, Mark, for giving all this like free game, uh, to the podcast community. So if I can help grow your platform. Much love, brother, and uh, much love to all you guys. I appreciate you. And until the next mini-sode in three months, I'm out of here.